inside this lesson, we're going to start talking a little bit about matrix inverses. Inside of lesson six, we're going to continue on with that discussion. So first off, let's define what an inverse of a matrix is. We say that a square matrix is invertible if we can find another matrix B so that we have two equations that are satisfied. We need A times B to be equal to an identity matrix, and we need B times A to be equal to an identity matrix as well. If this B exists, then we label it as A to the power of minus 1, or A inverse. If it's impossible for us to find such a B, then we say that A is not invertible. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of what I mean by that previous definition. Let's suppose that we have this matrix A. What we're going to do is we're going to take this matrix B, and we're going to find the matrix A times B and the matrix B times A. And what we're going to do is check to see if we do get an identity matrix. So for the matrix AB, we're going to take row 1 times column 1. So we would get 5 minus 4 for a value of 1. If we take row 1 and column 2, we have negative 20 plus 20 for 0. We take row 2 and column 1, we will have 1 minus 1. That gives us 0. And finally, if we take row 2 and column 2, we're going to have negative 4 plus 5 for 1. So the multiplication A times B gives us a 2 by 2 identity matrix. If we go ahead and do the same procedure on B times A, we will also get an identity matrix. So we're able to conclude that B is going to be the inverse of matrix A, and we write B as A to the power of minus 1. So the big question that arises is how can we find the inverse without just randomly guessing matrices and then performing those multiplications to check? So what I'm going to do for you on the next few slides is I'm going to work you through a procedure to find the inverse, and this is going to work for any size matrices, as long as it's square. And what we do is we use elementary row operations to find A inverse. The first step is we take a look at the size of our matrix A, and we attach the same size identity matrix on the right-hand side. This is kind of like forming an augmented matrix, only that it's going to be a little bit bigger than the augmented matrices we were using in the previous chapter. So in our case, since A is 3 by 3, we're going to attach a 3 by 3 identity matrix on the right-hand side of A. After you've set up this special augmented matrix, in step two, what we're going to do is try to get this left-hand side to reduce row echelon form using elementary row operations. So let's start by using that leading one in the upper left corner to make a zero in the bottom left. So we'll take row three plus two row ones. That'll give us the following augmented matrix. Notice that we do have a leading one in the correct spot in column number two, so we're going to use that leading one to make zeros above and below. And I will start by doing row one minus two row twos. Next, we'll take row three minus six times row two. To get our last leading one, we are going to multiply row three by minus one. And then the last operation we have to perform is row 1 plus row 3. And that leads us to the following augmented matrix. And you'll notice that over here on the left, we have reduced row echelon form. In fact, we have a 3 by 3 identity matrix. And that leads us to the final step, and that is to analyze the reduced row echelon form. If your reduced or echelon form happens to be an identity matrix, which is what we have here, then all of the values on the right-hand side of this augmented matrix represent the inverse of our starting matrix. So in our example, A inverse is going to be all of the values over here on the right side. And there is an alternate case that might happen when you analyze your reduced or echelon form, 
and that is that the reduced for echelon form is not equal to an identity matrix. So I've chosen a 2x2 two two matrix A that demonstrates this idea. If we go to try to find the inverse of this particular matrix A, we could set up the procedure just as before. So here's step 1. And as we work through step 2, we would take row 2 minus 3 row 1s to obtain a 0 below that first leading one. And we end up with the following situation. When we look at the left-hand side, this is in reduced row echelon form. But it's not a 2 by 2 identity matrix. And in this case, what we have to do is we have to accept that A is not going to have an inverse. A couple of questions may have come up as you were working through this lesson, and the first one is, why in the world does this elementary row operation procedure work? And unfortunately, that's something that I can't motivate to you yet. You're going to have to watch a couple more lessons and get the idea of elementary matrices before I can discuss why the procedure actually works. And a second question that may have come up is, is this the only way to find the inverse of a square matrix? And actually, the answer is no. We're going to take a look at a specific case in the next lesson. And in Chapter 3, after we talk a little bit about determinants, I'll come back and I'll show you a third way to find the inverse of any square matrix. All right, my little epsilons, stay positive.